I will not be alone on today's edition of the show. I have with me Ayo Baje. Of course, he is the President Guild of Public Affairs Analyst Nigeria Affairs. Now, talking about the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, we said that during this period, we recall all those who suffered or who paid the sacrifice for the nation. But one major issue that comes on this day is the welfare of this particular officers and of course to all those they left behind as we saw during the week as some retired soldiers uh, protested and complained about their welfare i mean after you've walked and served the nation uh, yet it's quite um, worrisome that they are complaining that the federal government is not still giving them their earned allowances and of course entitlements and benefits let's hear from them and we'll be right back the widows are not really finding it funny so many of them, their husbands died since like five years ago, and they've not been paid their insurance. There's what the military called insurance and other dead benefits. At least if the, um, they can help in creating skill acquisition for the widows, and then give, us, give them a, a, a start-up um, capital. Because even if you train a widow without giving her what to start that business with, it's like work done because of zero. Go, go. Pray for, we we'll always talk to government to help us because this is our pension is just of something to eat, something that we can use, the instrument that we can use we know now in Kaduna State. But some state, I cannot say maybe that people they have money. Let's say Benue State, Ebony State, all the other places they have, you know, they have money. We're still discussing the um, Forced Remembrance Day and, of course, security matters in the country. And, of course, we would say that to have a better security in the country, all those who are in charge to enforce this responsibility should be given a better welfare. Well, we are joined right now by Christopher Otaibe. Uh, I think all the pleasantries are well-to-do. Mm. He's the convener of Do Your Job Nigeria and, of course, uh, editor Niger Times. Thank you very much for joining us My on the show. My pleasure. All right, we're looking at the welfare of these officers to secure a better security in Nigeria. I mean, I think Ayo Baje, we don't mind. Imagine you serving the country and yet you're not giving your entitlements and welfare benefits. I mean, what does this say to people who have left service and even those who are in the service? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, first of all, you look at it to even decide on the individual basis that. Mm -hmm. I want to join the armed forces. Huh. I want to at least be part of uh, the security of this country. Yeah. Uh, you want to reinforce it. You want to be part and parcel of it. It's a noble gesture, and it is sacrificial. That is, you know that you can die at any point in time. So to have made that decision, you know, we look at those people and we feel that ah, these set of patriotic Nigerians, those who have a uh, you know, taking the country above their own personal, uh, even safety and all the rest, they should be taken very good care of. Years ago, I read some very disturbing, you know, account of retired soldiers not being paid their benefits. I had to write, in my opinion, a column and make sure that I syndicated it to as many newspapers uh, as possible. And it's something that one, you just ask yourself, how did we get to this level? It shouldn't even be something that one would you know, conceive that somebody who has served the country, some of them, you know, had died you know, along uh, the way. They, even those who are supposed to benefit, I mean, the widows and some other people that they've left behind their families. They are not even taking uh, good care of. So I think um, the shocking aspect of it is that instances where we've had people that are in government that have had military background and now they are in the civilian gap. And I can't even imagine, you know, people of that nature not enforcing it to ensure that these people are well taken care of. It's, it's, I mean, if you look at our you know, constitution, I used to say this over and over again. You look at section 14, subsection 2B of the 1999 constitution as amended. It is clearly stated there. First, it's what? To guarantee security. Before you talk about uh, welfare for the citizens, and who are those that are helping us to guarantee this security? The armed forces, at least, do. 
ensure and maintain the territorial integrity of the country and then of course you have the police and some other paramilitary you know forces so we should not even think about it that they are denied their you know benefits it is not a, and the, of course the message you are passing mm -hmm. along to the others you know <laughs> who are you know watching is, is, is that uh, they don't really care about them and beyond that there's an aspect that has really gotten me you know concerned yeah. i'll say that you see the issue of soldiers who are battling say the terrorists crying out loud that they're not pay, being paid their uh, benefits as at when you they are not fully armed you have the terrorists you have the you know the bandits more armed more well equipped than uh, these people and you know once in a while you have uh, the fifth columnist mm -hmm. i mean also you have people that will go out there because mm -hmm. they are not being well taken care of yeah <laughs> they will go and sell you know some top secrets it has happened before mm -hmm. there was a, a particular time you know uh, the information had gotten to the top hierarchy of the army or uh, where these uh, bandits and where the terrorists were hiding and just to go and uh, get you know them uh, you know uh, more or less uh, uh, muzzled up what happened those people had already gotten wind of uh, the coming of the of, of the military so you look at that you look some of them had you know because of uh, not being well equipped not being the uh, you know paid as that when you some of them you hear them crossing over to cameroon or yes. some the niger republic and you know some other places I okay. think it's not good enough. All right, let's hear from we Chris can, We can do much better. Okay, let's hear from Chris Eva. I mean, apart from yesterday, we saw President Muhammad of Buhari laying the reeds and lots of governors, uh, even though lots of controversies. And let's forget about the pigeons not flying. <laughs> but we're talking about serious issues here now, talking about the armed forces. And of course, looking at the background. Now, Ayo Baje mentioned the fact of people having a background from the military. And we would know that our president was also a former military member, a military officer. and you would expect that a lot of emphasis we put on the armed forces so what's your evaluation of this oh well um he has said most of it and um, what i took from what it said which is the reality and it's dangerous is the consequence mm. of not doing what you should do you can toy with the salaries of civilians who when they are retired you don't pay them their benefit they just die on the queue nothing happens but for soldiers that's that's treasonable that's treasonable i mean let's call it what it is because you know that the soldiers are the last uh round of defense for the country and the only defense for the country one soldier one that is denied of his entitlement can wreck the country huh. one no matter how no matter the rank so i i, I think each time you know, I, I talk about Nigeria's problem. One thing rings true. One thing, one. Mindset. What is the mindset of those people who are in charge of this? Mm. That's the question you ask. What, what goes on in their mind? What is their thinking? What makes them justify in their brain, in their mind, that what has been happening before I was born and I was employed here? Mm -hmm. I come here and I stop it because I'm going to get so much money from it. What goes on is his mind. Is his mind formed enough to know that for every money you steal on this job, yeah. for every soldier you deny his money because you want to steal it on this job, do you know that the life of the country, not just the life of the country, because to you, you don't even know the country. It doesn't make sense to you because you are a thief. Do you know that the life of your own family is in danger? Or your relative is in danger? Because these are the people to protect exactly. you. Exactly. And your life too is in danger. So that is where it is. Every other thing for me is just secondary. You are talking about the man who is signing. It's what he signs that goes up. Alright? And it's what he does that the next guy below him looks at. And the next guy below the guy next below him mm -hmm. so that is the way it happened let's just face it the way it is 
we have come to a point in our lives in this country that we are beginning to eat our own entrails our own inside our own intestines that's where we are because 30 years before today it was abominable that you would think of denying a soldier a soldier his benefits it was abominable now we are at war in fact let nobody get it twisted we are not at war nigerian army is not at war nigerian army is in a is in a self-made war situation mm. that's where we are let's not get it twisted and get it right it's not the whole of the nigerian army establishment some bad eggs in this force who are occupying strategic positions yeah have destroyed demystified all that is held sacred for a nation's defense and so they're having a ball doing it because i do not know when and how it's, how come it happened to the point where nigerian army is battling with a ragtag bandits they're not even a ragtag army they are bandits look i thank god for kankara kankara was you were like kankara came to us on the platter of gold to show us what was happening that there's a romance between <laughs> bandits mm -hmm. and nigerian government mm. do you understand yeah. it was a platter of good information but nigerians are not really getting it because we now know that some people know who Boko Haram people are they know where they are mm -hmm. all right and if they can release over 300 children without a shot being fired without a dime being paid we get we were told <laughs> and then they were just it was just a thank you it's been nice doing business with you at least every child is safe it just shows that something is wrong well i think christopher has rightly said it there we still need to put a lot of emphasis and priority on the arms sector we would know that over time last year even this year when discussing security issues bombings here and uh, farmers headers clashes mm -hmm. bandits mm -hmm. in the north people are still dying and that's why i would say that priority should go to the armed forces i mean i know that everybody is a priority in the nation yeah. i mean if you look at it lots of people are still complaining of their pensions mm -hmm. and of course uh, it's, it's really sad that after you work and then at your old age when you're supposed to enjoy your allowances and entitlements you are deprived of this so I think we'll call on the federal government to put things in order of course the armed forces in order in particular to have a better security defense system for the country